Welcome back to Van Life, <laughs> the No Strings Attached Street Ministry. Uh, I want to talk about uh, an event that happened a couple weeks ago, uh, about a week ago or so. I can't remember. It's probably a week, week, week two, two weeks ago, somewhere like that. But um, it's been extremely, extremely hot down here in Florida, and um, it's just been crazy temperatures. And I've been having a lot of hard times with my van overheating. So, you know, I try my best, and I have ever since I've had the van, is to keep it in very pristine running order. I mean, I baby this van and I replace parts and do things to it. To, but I wanted to, I always did that, and I always felt that it preventive maintenance was the best thing you could ever do. Um, so if I noticed something that I seemed that was getting tired or something like that was always being replaced, um, always done extra maintenance on it. But that was just because I wanted the van in a position to where I felt comfortable traveling all the way across the United States if I had to and have no problems with the van. But this last uh, week or so I was starting to have a little bit of overheating problems. and. Um, you know how overheating problems can be very dangerous for a car. So I want to go up and, I mean, this van, ever since I owned it, it stayed right at a certain spot, uh, down way low on the gauge, um, its whole life. And all of a sudden, I noticed it starting to move up. And um, yeah, I would add fluid here and there, and I would do different things. And then um, it overheated uh, one other time, and I, Finally took it and uh, took the cap off, and it was full of like this, um, like this mud consistency stuff. I couldn't really figure out what that was, so I'm like, well, how in the world could it produce mud, you know? But um, I went on and cleaned it up on the cap, and actually replaced the cap, cleaned all the mud that I could find in it, and flushed it, and you know, let it flow out. Tried to do what I could to clean it. You know, right there at the at the uh, port where the you know where the cap was at, but um, put it back on and drove it for another day or so, and it started heating up again, and went on with this. And all of a sudden, I was at a parts house. I pulled over to a parts house and um, replaced the cap once again on it, cleaned it up, got some radiator fluid, uh, bought about five gallons, I think it was, of uh, radiator fluid. Uh, put in the truck, topped it off, put in the truck, and put the rest in the back of the truck and started driving back to the house. Uh, when I got almost to it, it was extremely hot, and it was really climbing up, but the road that I was on had those curves, you know, the like six inch curves all the way down the road, so I couldn't really get off the highway. So I knew about a, another three quarters of a mile down the road, there was a, a McDonald's down there. So I pushed it down to that. And when I pulled into the McDonald's area, I pulled around to the abandoned side of the parking lot and I turned it off and just let it sit there and cool. Now still no steam, no nothing. I mean, usually you would think all kinds of crazy, you know, when you have an overheating vehicle. It's usually a sign of like a leak or something would cause that to overheat like that. But um, it didn't. It just sat there and was sort of ticking. And uh, just made this real deep ticking noise. I didn't pay attention to it. I just sat there for about, I don't know, maybe three minutes, it seems like. And then all of a sudden, I hear this explosion. Kaboom! No smoke, no steam, no nothing. Just like a grenade went off underneath the hood. So I jump out of the truck, of course, and run around to the front and looking around. I saw coming out the passenger side down the slope of the hill. This, like, um, honestly, it looked like an oil slick. You know, I had, you know, all I saw was this brown, mucky stuff, and uh, it it was on a freshly paved black, dark black uh, pavement. So I really couldn't tell that it was water, but um, you know, it ended up being water. But uh, this like brown slick going across the parking lot, and it had like this little sheen, like the um, like the rainbow sheen. You know, usually that's a sign of uh, oil or gas or something. You know, 
So that's usually what that looks like. And I figured it was just oil slick pouring down. So I instantly called the tow truck to have it towed back. Got in, tried to start it after it cooled down, you know, to help the guy get it up on the truck, and it wouldn't. It just clicked, and I'm like, okay, you know, that's a sign there, probably a locked engine or something, you know. That's what I was thinking, because it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even turn it over at all. It just would click in, and it felt like it clicked in, but then it would stop. So I just left it, and he towed it onto the house, and I let it sit up there for like. <laughs> two days before I had enough nerve to actually go out there and actually look at it and see. So I looked around underneath and, you know, for like a thrown rod or something, I was, I didn't know what in the world was going on with it. So, I mean, I was looking for any kind of oil drippage, anything, but you know what? Not a drop under it, not a place under there I could even see where it was even wet. And I'm like, what in the world was that? I popped the hood and everything looked okay up on top of the hood, you know, when you look, of course, when you look in a van, you don't see very much. It's just a bunch of junk right there and on the way, so. But I wanted to look at the uh, the belt and everything. So I reached up and put my hand on top of the top hose of the radiator, and as I was bending down to look underneath, my fingers, all four of my fingers, went inside the hose, of <laughs> the top hose. And I'm like, whoa. So I took the hose off, and I looked at it, and it was a split probably about this long in that hose. And I'm like, dang. So I took the cap back off, and I looked down the radiator, and of course that mud stuff was in there still, you know. So I was trying to figure out what in the world could that mud stuff be. But then I remembered about a year before that, I put a can of that bars. Uh, stop leak, the engine repair stop leak stuff in there. I did that because I seemed to, um, was losing gas mileage. It seemed like it was going through oil, you know, not a lot of oil at the time, but it just seemed like it would, you know, I would have to add oil, you know, about a quart before I did my oil change. And I just, I said, well, maybe it's, you know, like a gas or something was leaking, you know, and it's causing it to burn that oil. So I put this stuff in there in hopes to do that, but I forgot all about this stuff. But apparently, that stuff is nasty for your motor. I didn't even have no clue on that. I've never ever used that stuff before. But um, yeah, I had to end up uh, tearing the top of the motor out, you know, all the top stuff off the top of the motor to get to where the hose was. I replaced the uh, thermostat. When I pulled the thermostat out, it was plug solid as well, but then it wouldn't even release. It wouldn't, couldn't, couldn't even push it down. Did a boil test on it, nothing, it wouldn't even open, so I figured, well, that's a, it's a bad thermostat. So I went on and replaced the thermostat and the gasket for that. Um, put a new hose on it. Flushed everything completely out. Um, uh, <clears throat> put all new clamps on it. Um, what else did I do? I flushed the I flushed the radiator probably three times with that radiator flush stuff, and uh, then drained it all out again. I filled it all back up, and of course now I'm paranoid, right? Because you know I get back in the truck and I start it back up. And I let it sit there and just idle in the yard, and I drive it around the, the block a couple times, you know just in case it was overheating again. And the heat went back up to another spot that I've never, it always, I figured it was getting hot again. And then it sort of stapled off. And then it started doing this fluctuation back and forth. And I'm like, all right, what the world's going on there? It's never done that neither before. As I pulled it back into the yard, I, my driveway is at a real, you know, pretty steep hill. So I stopped on the hill with the engine facing forward. And um, went in the house, come back out a few minutes later, started it back up again. And it would stay stable, it wouldn't fluctuate. So what I was thinking it might be was just some air pockets that was in still within the engine, you know, that needed to get out. And when it turned it off, it, you know, when it finally filled the motor up properly. And, uh, then I, you know, took about three days or four days, you know, just doing little short spurt runs, things I was scared of it, you know, I didn't know what to do, you know, in which I didn't know why I was scared because I do have, you know, the, uh, you know, the AAA, so I can go anywhere I want to go. 
So then I had a job, you know, about 100 miles away. So I went on and did that little run. And when I come back from that run, no problems at all, and everything seemed to be working fine. It still was even hotter yet those days. So hopefully everything is fine. Um, just goes to show you, you know, that be prepared because, you know, you can have things happen to even the ones that you take the best care of. You know, even brand new cars can do the same thing. But, I mean, I, I replace the brakes on this stuff, the calipers, quite often. Um, shocks i mean the all the mechanical running parts of this truck has been replaced um i mean i like i said i baby it like you won't believe i mean i could truly trust this van to get in it and drive to alaska and back not even think twice about it and this van's got a lot of miles on it but i've driven a lot of miles but you know what it's been taken very good care of all those miles so um and uh, when the transmission started slipping and stuff, instead of having it rebuilt, I put a brand new one in it, you know, from the manufacturer. So it shows you the kind of care I do take care of it very well. And I don't mind spending the money on it because it's done me well. I mean, but you got to realize to replace this with a brand new van, the same quality and everything that's there, you're probably looking in the $40,000, $50,000 range. So... I mean, it seems like that's what the van was back in the day it was sold, you know, it was like 40 grand. You know, so, I don't know, it just uh, makes better sense, you know, to, to take good care of something. And I always said that I would probably run it till the wheels fell off of it. Hopefully I don't fell off of it yet, but you know, I don't want them to fall off, but you know, that was just a metaphor, I guess. But <laughs> it just goes to show you the troubles that can always come and rise. So like I said, protect yourself and make sure you have a good AAA, not one that just, you know, gets you five miles. Get the big one, you know, get the one that you really could use. I, I have the one that gets like, I think 175 miles or something per tow. Um, I figured that way if I have to run it to a certain mechanic that's, you know, maybe 150 miles away, then I have the tow ability to do that. Or if I'm anywhere in Florida and break down, I can actually have it towed right back to my house. And I've done that three or four different times. So, you know, I, when something messes up and I can't fix it on the road, then that's exactly what I'll do. Is I'll, I'll either have it towed to an um, auto parts store uh, where I can get the tools and stuff to fix that and keep it going. Or I'll have it towed back to the house where I know I have what I need to get it, re you know, get it repaired. Or I'll have my mechanic, and I'll take it to his house and have him do it, you know, and do the repairs. But um, this goes to show you, you know, you're still going to have troubles with it. And while it was broke down, I was like, all right, well, maybe it's the engine. I was worried that it was the engine, so I was looking at other vans, and I was looking at different things, you know, different options. And you know, it sort of got me thinking, I don't know, maybe I'll sell this van, you know, give it to someone that won't use it as hard as I do and maybe come up with a new project. Maybe give me some motivation to do more videos, you know, just to have something else going on. But um, I don't know, people say, well, how much would you take for it? <laughs> Wouldn't have no clue. It's probably worth $10,000, $12,000, I'd say. I mean, it's in great shape. I mean, I've got a lot in it. I mean, where else can you get a van that's fully you know, self-contained, it's got air conditioning and everything else. So, you know, I've got a lot lot of uh, comfort to have to survive here in Florida with it. So it's set up, it's, you know, it's done set up properly, especially for just a single guy or someone, you know, that, that can live like I do in it. And, uh, but I don't know, maybe I'll sell it, maybe I won't. But um, anyway, I just wanted to give you an update on that, let you know that it's still not dead yet. I mean, it's, it's still clicking right along and pushing right along. I wanted to do an update uh, video because there was a lot of people on Facebook. I guess I posted on Facebook when I thought I blew the motor in it. And I um, just wanted to do a video real quick just to let the people know, you know, that it, it is back running again. It is back fixed again. So that way, you know, none of you have to worry or anything. And... Uh, so hopefully just uh, keep us trucking down the road. So God bless each and one of you. This is just an update video. I figured it was something you might want to know. And hopefully everything will be all right. But like I said, God always provides. He always makes sure that everything is fine. 
He's always protected me in many, many ways and showed me many, many miracles. So I'm not really ever worried about it, but uh, just another testament of my faith. Uh, God bless each and every one of you, and you all have a great day. Thank you for coming by. Oh, make sure you hit the bell, subscribe, and like if you like it. Make sure you comment. All this helps my videos get out there and just, you know, get going. Um, thanks a lot. Have a good day.